Hey everybody, Crimson Artist here. I got another R&D log for you. While I was searching the forums, I found something very interesting. Just watch. Did you catch that? I jumped without even being in the core. Apparently it's not possible to use logic with jump drives. This is something I've been wanting ever since FTL was added to the game. Now I don't know if this is a recent addition, or perhaps it's something I overlooked. However, this gives me a lot of interesting ideas. So I got to experimenting. This is what I got. First of all, is how it works. You can slave jump drives to any logic block, however the only on signals or high signals will initiate a charge. You'll know that it's charging if you get the charge message on the right side of your screen. Unless you really want to press R all day, a logic clock is the best option for this. However, it should be noted that the game does not discriminate between charging and jumping. Once fully charged, another logic input will initiate a jump. And with a logic clock, that means that one moment you could be charging, the next you could be jumping. This isn't helped either by the fact you can't even see your charge level. When you slave any ship system to a logic lock, it removes it from the weapons menu and your hotbar. While this fact alone could make logic charging unviable, I believe I have developed a workaround. Since a ship can't jump while docked, the key here is to charge only when it's docked. Using the fact that rail dockers can emit a logic signal, I was able to make a logic clock that only turns on while docked, but off when undocked. And through an inner ship remote, I can manually activate it when it's fully charged. The only downside is I still can't see the charge level. I just have to hope that it's fully charged when I take off. Speaking of charging, logic charging has a very strange charge rate. Each logic input gives a very tiny amount of charge when you compare it to the manual method. This can result in abnormally long charge times. Even with the required amount of modules, it could take upwards of 10 minutes to fully charge a drive. Thankfully, increasing the mass to module ratio does reduce the time. But if you want a really fast charge rate, be prepared to put an absurd amount of modules. Though on the plus side, logic charging does dramatically reduce the amount of energy needed to charge. This could make jump drives with smaller ships more viable, if you don't mind waiting. By far the most useful aspect about this is the ability to fire off multiple jump drives in quick succession. If you slave multiple jump drives to a logic lock, you can continuously jump one right after the other. Since logic jumps also work with your waypoints, you can effectively make long trips much shorter. However, you may want to calculate how many jumps it takes to get to your destination. It's entirely possible to overjump if your destination takes less jumps than you have. And finally, a word of warning. If you're thinking that you can just sit it, forget it, and walk around your ship, don't. Logic jumps only follow a waypoint when you're in the core. If you initiate a jump outside the core, it'll only jump in the direction it's facing. It's also entirely possible for a ship to jump without you if you're not aligned to it, so be careful. And those are some of my observations. I hope you found it useful. While this feature is pretty cool, some of its quirks don't make it very practical. In my opinion, if jump jazz give off a logic signal once fully charged, then we'll be able to distinguish between charging and jumping. And with logic circuits, we can create a more reliable auto charger with manual triggers. Well, here's hoping the devs are listening. This is Crimson Artist, signing out.